Ting, and this is my partner, Taksin. Well, we started our office about seven years ago. Um, back then, we, we didn't know much people and no, nobody knows us. So we start with our own projects. Uh, we do a lot of doodles. Uh, just happened that me, uh, we can, I mean, I draw a lot of comics uh, when free. We're starting to uh, write poems. So uh, I think it's a good combination. So this uh, project is uh, a self-initiated project. Uh, we do our own uh, thinking about what if architecture can do something, you know. What? I mean, of course, we believe, uh, everyone believes architecture can do a lot of things. But what if we can uh, make buildings that can do something better? So we were designing uh, buildings that can uh, move. Uh, I mean, of course, this is all imaginations, but uh, the idea is that what if the building can walk and breathe like humans? So the first one is actually we call it a Milos Grove. It's kind of a structures that have a lot of views and they collect that data. And all this is their friends, you know, uh, they do some kind of funny things at night. This uh, Pharisees uh, Billy's is a kind of a structure that can actually dig in and plant seeds on the ground. So I think uh, while we are doing architecture, we sometimes we find that we are in the dilemma: are we um, destroy the environment and you know just making money, or if we can do something else? After after that uh, project, we do have one commission: uh, is to do. Um, a five-story buildings, which is considered big for a small office, just the two of us. So we come up with the ideas that uh, if this hotel is not only for us, but also for others uh, living creatures, like flying fishes, you know, uh, insects, hot chicks, and, and plants, trees. But this project doesn't doesn't work. I mean, I mean, after the, the, the client thought this maybe you know it's too much for them. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, a few years, we got another project in Ipo, which is called the Old Block. It's a five-story building. So we were asked to design something, something that can actually make these uh, old buildings alive. It, it was a bank, and um, the client bought it. They, 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 they do, don't have much budget, so they, they think they want to keep the main structures. So what we can do is to do um, just instructions. So we do all these uh, screens and um, balconies, uh, pavilions on the roof. I think what is more important is actually the programs inside these buildings. This is a screen uh, using uh, just a perfect, uh, expanded wire mesh. We can actually uh, grow creepers over it. Um, at that time, uh, also, uh, there's friends uh, of uh, the late Yasmin Ahmad, the directors who make movies like Serpent, is that uh, this Chinese boy fall in love with the Malay girls. Um, when uh, Yasmin passed away, um, the friends of Yasmin uh, want to set up a small museum to, um, to, to actually display whatever works he has done and, you know, in, in Ipoh. So um, we do have one space for that. So uh, our clients are very generous people. They are, um, they are actually a full of them. They are friends. They are sexans, in sexans uh, landscape architects. Uh, Kamil Americans, uh, GTP's uh, founders, and some friends. So they actually allowed uh, uh, Yasmin's uh, friends to set up this museum in the, the old block. Now this uh, this is some uh, images we uh, we took uh, today in the flights from uh, KL. It's in Air Asia uh, 360 uh, magazines. Now this guy here, this handsome guy, uh, his name is Jovian. Jovian Lee, he's actually uh, Yasmin's, uh, one of his Yasmin's friends. So he actually initiated these projects. So 
So we put the museum is one of the uh, on the second floor. This is the entrance. We are using the entrance at the back facing a small courtyard, and there's a staircase coming up from from this uh, little door. And this is a room before the uh, exhibition started. And this is one of the very important uh, stairwell, which I will later uh, explain. Now, this is uh, some clips from the movie. Uh, this is called uh, Sepet, where this Chinese boy uh, fall in love with a Malay girl, and in the middle of the night, she creep out from the house. And this staircase is actually not the exact staircase of where these uh, films are taken, but it's actually next to the museums that we are doing. So, what in our imagination is that Perhaps this building or this museum should use as a screen. You know, I mean, it's like a projector to project out the imagine, uh, imaginations of films or stories. There's some funny sound here. <laughs> so this is our exhibit here. Some are uh, Yasmin's uh, belongings. Yes, bits. <laughs> we do have a small little place here. It's actually for the uh, container hotels. And a little gardens on the top, rooftops. And this is the service apartment. So it's a combination of different programs put into one building. We are using a lot of recycled materials like um, these uh, GI darkings and uh, recycled timbers. And then we have another project in Bangsa. This is in a place called Tamang Wenglok. It's an old uh, place. Uh, it's, they call this Old Bangsa in KL. And there's a corner house here. The, client, the clients actually, um, he bought this piece of land and uh, decide, decided to make it as a student housing. So the brief is to uh, create eight numbers of rooms in this uh, 20 by 40 square feet uh, area and every room we, we created bathrooms and a small study as well as a, a, a bed above the bathrooms and the programs to make it more complicated we also told to the clients that perhaps we can insert another programs we can insert a community library. So you can see it's here. So this is a section showing the activities inside the, the house. So the student housing is only happens at the external of the buildings and the internal, the middle part is the library. There's a small little kitchens and pantry here and the dining. And in case you can see, there's a corridor surrounded the library. The library itself is actually uh, made of uh, anti climbs uh, fencing. And books are all donated by the public. We only spend about 1,000 ringgit to buy books from Big Bang Wolf. Other books are actually donations from friends. And now we have about 15,000 books. All these photos are taken from the uh, internet, uh, Instagrams. And this is like lighting qualities coming in at the corridor. The corridor itself is for the students. The books, end of the day, will act as uh, a barrier, as a barrier, and becoming a wall. This is how it looks like. There's an airwell coming from the top. 
And this is the pantry and the dining area. It's a very small room, therefore we uh, make use of every inches. The study can become a landing. People can, students can step up here and walk and walk up to the bed. The external of the buildings are made of concrete as well as the biasinating to give privacy. This was how it looked like when it was completed and this is how it looked like now. I'm going to sp uh, spend some time to talk about uh, our office and how we evolve. This is our current office, how it looks like. So it's actually uh, located at a two-story link house in, in Kuala Lumpur. And we planted a lot of trees, so it's not so obvious. And we are using a lot of uh, bricks when we do the demolitions inside the, the house. These are all the bricks that we use uh, we, we collected from the old building debris and we plant creepers. And we also collected uh, bricks from uh, another site. All these uh, GI ducts, we use it to create uh, lightings and as well as uh, suspended uh, cable train. This is how it looked like when it was completed. All this brick is a uh, casa bricks uh, salvaged from a uh, site. Now they're building the new uh, IKEA in, in Charas. This is how it looks like now. This is the back of the office. We always thought that uh, architecture can help to make a better world, but I think after uh, doing architecture for the past seven years, we thought perhaps uh, food is another thing that we can do, you know. Perhaps we can actually think about how our food coming is from. This is our office. It's actually uh, it's located in the Taman. It's called Taman United. And our office is here. It's the second house from this Jalan Sepakat 9. And not far from our office, there's a big, uh, not, not big actually, is a, is a small park where we created uh, some planting uh, beds. And our staff actually spending a lot of times when they are free, they will go there to do a lot of plantings. This is how we use our uh, office uh, garage space to do uh, planting beds. And then we transfer all these plants into the park. We make use of every inch in the office uh, to plant more veggies and then we transfer it to this uh, park. And we, whatever harvest we get, sometimes we will spread it among our, all the colleagues and then we pass it to the neighbors. Beside that, we also rent a big piece of uh, land in Lahorawang, which is about 45 minutes from KL. And this is what about last night, right? Yeah, this is, this is what happened last night. We have a mid autumn festival. We actually celebrate uh, the Mooncake Festivals, you know, bringing a lot of our communities to come to eat with us, have tea. And we're also giving away seats to them.
So after giving thoughts about food and uh, planting, we thought that we should also extend our reach to uh, reading, as in uh, reading books. We moved the whole office, the working space upstairs, to vacant the downstairs space, become a community space, as well as a library area. At the same time, we actually form a, a book club to promote reading among colleagues. This is uh, in a way that uh, we wanted to these people to actually have further exploration in other, other things that is other than the practice and bring back from the inspiration that they learn, bring back to the work itself. So we have actually envisaged to uh, run a series of uh, reading by the team of uh, author. Like during this time, we are actually concentrating on uh, this Italian uh, writer. It's called uh, Ital Ital Italo Calvino. And we try to curate uh, interesting reading session among us, not just uh, reading and then uh, sit down and then talk about it, but we, we, we do more than that. Sometimes we choose a nice place to do it, and sometimes we choose the right length so that uh, everyone can spend, let's say, 45 minutes to read and then straight away share. So there's no excuse that you can't read or you don't want to read. So we try to make reading interesting in the office. Well, this is a CCTV catching all of us uh, <laughs> doing reading. Yeah. And we set up Facebook pages to promote things that we share. And uh, at the end of the day, we do hope that after that series of uh, reading session, we would like to recreate things from, uh, from the reading itself. For instance, uh, Cavino himself writing about cities, invisible cities, which is one of the textbook or reading stuff from architecture school. And therefore, we will be organizing a similar walk in the city to explore things, looking in the way of how Cavino look at uh, cities. So on and so forth. And throughout the time, we actually thought that uh, we wanted to do more than just uh, building. We want to do probably one of these things that is called uh, place making, or we want to do more engagement with the public. So this is one of the projects that we are able to realize uh, such uh, intention. This is called a Slangor Digital Creative Center. It is, uh, although it is like a state level kind of a building, but the way it is conceived is a bit of a wishy-washy. A developer was like unwillingly contribute some of their vacant lot in, uh, in the development to, to this project. Therefore, it was like uh, inside some uh, shop house uh, space. And, and it's not ground floor. It's a first and second floor. And it occupied 11 empty lot of some shop house or shop office lot. And it doesn't have a frontier because this is a surrounded by a playground. So you only see, uh, what do you call this, uh, playground elements and all that. It's a very commercial thing outside. So this is a building without a frontier. And the purpose of this building is actually to promote uh, digital startup for young people and uh, co-working space, and as well as promoting uh, 3D working, 3D printing and uh, makers uh, culture. So before I show you the photo, we better take a look at this uh, diagram, which is the uh, best illustrated on the space that we're trying to do. Since it is uh, done in uh, order to connect all the internal space in the shop lot, some one story, some two story, hidden inside, we, uh, at the end, thought that we should actually create an internal street experience to connect all the internal shop lot space together. Therefore, we're still having like a, a 
spatial experience rather than just uh, simply connecting shop office uh, lots. This is where you're coming along the corridor way that you can go up. And when you go up, this is the first floor. And there's a main circulation stairs that bring to the second floor. The stairs is, works as a hybrid of uh, exhibition space and things like that. And we also created void and, uh, to, to create a kind of a sense of space. So this is uh, when you first arrive, you got to see this uh, double volume space that we try to knock down some of the floor slabs. And uh, we do a little bit of uh, unconventional way of doing things here, like for example, the uh, admin, the, the reception is actually represented by this uh, worktop. It looks like a carpenter working on it. So it's actually trying to uh, demolish the kind of hierarchy in uh, in, uh, con uh, in uh, institutional building. So in the sense that we're trying to do a public space in, a, in this institutional building. And you can see that this is a fireman post where actually sometimes uh, they feel like lazy to walk down the stairs. They can actually jump down from the fireman's post. <laughs> so things are a bit uh, unconventional and uh, trying to uh, have the kind of uh, work culture ad hoc uh, spirit. And this is the uh, stairs that links from the downstairs to the upper level with skylight open down. And at times it can be uh, used uh, as a lecture place. And the, the design, of the program of this building is done in such a way that uh, it encourages the user to use the the internal space as flexible as they can. They can redefine the space along the program that they are trying to create here. We have a shelf that, that is a library that is promoting some of the reading there, as well as a pallet box, a lecture space to promote the free lectures about e-commerce sometimes, or a startup experience, and things like that, so that uh, the youth are actually being encouraged to participate in all this. And this is a, a holding area of uh, going into the lectures, and uh, it sometimes uh, double up as a co-working area. A maker space studio for 3D makers, 3D printers, they have all the tools to explore their creation. Another example of our placemaking project. This project started really ambitious, uh, trying to create a platform of knowledge whereby it is a library house a huge collection of uh, government policies and public administration at the same time they envisage to uh, to do a library that is pro uh, linked to, with the public as this library is located at one of the biggest uh, op open market in uh, Kuala Lumpur in Pudu but after, the, 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 this is actually a whole floor of a reading area where, whereby the, this side of the building is the one that is exposed to sunlight. Therefore, we plan it for more human activities. And the one that is opposite this end become the reading, uh, become the uh, book collection, the one that receives the least of the sunlight. And the one in the middle will be naturally a public area for uh, lectures, uh, speeches, a combined area when they need to. But after realizing how humble is the, the budget that they have, which is a really, really small amount of money, we advise our client to just do a small section of this idea as a nucleus library to start with.
and uh, realizing how the budget is going to be, we uh, didn't give up on uh, design. We thought that while doing this uh, library, we actually also having the, uh, what do you call this, uh, contemplation about how the world is going by with less and less people wanting to uh, read or pick up a book to read. They would rather read from a computer screen than uh, uh, you know, pick up a physical book to read. So we thought that what we should do for this library to instigate really the, the, the act of reading or the habit of reading by doing a, a installation, which is a, a, a paper installation trying to uh, capture a state of uh, this uh, a stack of paper that is being floating. And uh, it's like uh, a, knowledge being shimmering out from the books. With the help of the aircon, the page, sometimes they will just goyang goyang and uh, become like a reading pages, giving a, a very strong effect of, of that uh, poetic sense of uh, the space that we're trying to create. We hope that with such insertion of uh, treatment to the space, it actually keep reminding people about, about reading. And uh, since then, there were a lot of uh, activity being carried out there. And uh, even we have a TV, TV uh, program being done at that area. Okay, I'm just going to recite a, a small line, a few lines from this uh, installation notes. This installation is about pages that refuse to stay in a state of being unread, refuse to uh, just be a stack of uh, bonded paper. Pages that want to stay outside the book, that want to force the uh, content out of the book. So a life that, when blown by the cold breeze in the library, one can hear each of the reading pages whispering, read me, read me. We had uh, this uh, opportunity to, sorry, I have to uh, rephrase. We initiated this project, project ourselves. We realized that this, this is a, a bus stop project that we tried to propose to uh, Pataling Jaya City Council. After knowing that they are going to uh, promote free bus. You know, the public, uh, the public transport is very lacking in uh, in KL and uh, in uh, PJ, that a lot of people would rather drive cars and uh, therefore it causes a lot of jams and, and there's a lack of uh, public parkings. Or sometimes maybe people just refuse to pay for the car park and park by the roadside, so it costs more jams. Therefore, the state of uh, Selangor actually have this uh, benevolent idea of why don't they just, instead of creating more car parks, they give free bus service to the people. So we thought that this is a good opportunity to actually re-look into bus stop, which we thought is, uh, is one of the most important public space that you would ever have to go through. But of course, uh, conventionally, a bus stop in our context will be associated with uh, commercial billboards or loan shark stickers or, or these uh, house moving advertisement all those of things that is simply because uh, in Klang Valley bus stop is being commissioned out to advertising agent so that they take care of the bus construct bus stop construction and in return they put up advertisement board and, and collect money so it become it become a, a commercial tolls rather than a, a purely a bus stop itself. So by re, when we re look back the root of this thing, we thought that it would be really, really good if we uh, try to converge all sorts of uh, public activity that we can do to this uh, public space. 
First, we look at, very simple, we look at uh, the way the seating is being arranged. We thought that maybe an L-shaped seating is better than just a straight line seating, which we can see everywhere in Malaysia. L-shape will promote uh, people's uh, interaction one to another. And this is just one of the modules that we, we can do. How about, instead of uh, this uh, advertising board, we do some uh, climber's wall that trying to refresh people. And uh, how about this uh, a book exchange box where people can pick up books or leave a book for other people to read in certain area. So we have a, we, after we thought of a one module after another that can have different function other than just waiting for a bus. But the bus stop can actually do a lot of things. Uh, this is a, a display box that try to introduce, say, in certain area, maybe they are handmade artists, they are artists work, they, they can rent or they can get it for free to display their works and contacts there so that they, in a way, to promote their work. I mean, this is so much better than advertising board, right? And uh, definitely the uh, recycle bins. And uh, when we dissect this into uh, different, different modules, then we can look at in different community, we can have different combination of such module. It doesn't have to be uh, fixed. For instance, uh, certain area that is close to school, we can have more books exchange box. And uh, for area that is uh, close to the market, maybe we will have more sitting benches. So therefore, a bus stop is actually an indication of how special the community, uh, the uh, nearby neighborhood it is going to be. And the bus stand itself is also an element that we should look at with good graphic inputs, uh, a, a lively uh, signage, and sometimes even introducing uh, uh, guidance uh, on the street furniture and along the, the, the sidewalk so that it becomes so alive that you know, people fall in love with bus stops. And we, this project is uh, in the process of going through some bureaucratic uh, uh, level where the uh, council has uh, set up a committee to scrutinize the, the design. And uh, we do in a pro bono manner, trying to see if uh, some of these things could be realized. In fact, it, it doesn't look so much different from a conventional bus stop, but just the way we give a different top and, and twist the, 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 the spatial arrangement of, of it. And uh, this is a very fresh from the oven. In fact, it's still in the oven because this is not completed yet. Uh, we can show you until the work that was done until yesterday. Oh, yeah, yesterday, yes. It's uh, installation work to be carried out in uh, Iskandar, Edu City, nearby Johor Bahru. Uh, we all know that the uh, southern Johor, Johor Bahru, opposite Singapore, is uh, having undergoing a vast development in the last 10 years with money pumping and, and doing a lot of uh, this uh, clean sweeping of uh, natural element to do a tabla rasa of a, a flat, flattened land and, and to, to redo everything uh, high rises or shop houses, commercial schools, and all that. So at the same time, actually the Southern Johor facing a lot of uh, environmental issues. So we look at that this uh, commission. We thought that we should actually look at the symbol that is closely associated with with this uh, area. It, which includes uh, the seahorses, the uh, wild elephant, the, the, uh, this is a, a dugong, which uh, looks like a mermaid. Uh, this uh, swordfish, a migrant, and a mangrove forest. It's a bit of a storytelling. In the year, or during the early 1990s, there was this uh, shocking story of a wild elephant, a group of wild elephant who was confused by the state of development in 
some of the Felda in uh, southern Johor that they got so confused, they actually swam across the sea to Singapore, Pulau Tekong. This is a very famous news. But to these uh, elephants are uh, shocking. They landed on Pulau Tekong, which is a more developed area, which no more jungle, uh, full of people and all that. So they, uh, they, they, they couldn't uh, suit themselves with that kind of environment. And, and uh, actually people were shocked by this scene as well. So this uh, elephant, they got to be tranquilized and uh, they got to be uh, sent back to the wildland of Johor by actually guiding this uh, elephant swimming across the, the Selat Terbrau from uh, Singapore back to uh, Johor Bahru with the help of uh, NGO from two countries. It became uh, headlines during the, that time. And obviously this is a, a sign of overdeveloped state, state of overdeveloped and uh, without taking care of other wildlife. At the same time, we look at uh, the, the state of uh, threat that happened to Johor Bahru, where Kuala Sungai Pulai, one of the main river in Johor Bahru, formerly best known as the most dense populated with uh, seahorses uh, land, and now also facing threat from uh, land reclamation everywhere in uh, Johor Bahru. And uh, Dugong, the numbers of Dugong has reduced so much that one even believes that there is no more Dugong. And this is just of the, one of the skeletons that we found in uh, NGO's uh, office. On and off, we can see migrants, you know, such huge creature that fly around here. And it is believed that the numbers of these migrants is also hugely reduced at this point of time. And we also take a quick look at uh, Tanjong Pi. So these are mangrove forests that is eroded by uh, land reclamation from the state itself and which will bring threat to these sea nomads uh, village. These sea nomads, they migrated to land and stick to uh, staying by the uh, mangrove forest and uh, continue their living as a fisherman and all that. So all this has been uh, vastly affected by the vast development of Jawabaru. So we thought that we should actually through our work uh, to, to, to uh, arouse attention and awareness of this. The given site is actually a man-made lake, doubled up as a detention pond for Edu City, which is an uh, uh, education town, consists of uh, five or six uh, universities, Reading University, Southampton, Newcastle, Medic School, MMU, so on and so forth. So we were given this uh, site to do something. So we thought that, you know, uh, perhaps we can realize some of the doodle that uh, we show you just now in this project. We named this uh, project Repart. It is actually a, a play of words of the word tapir. Tapir is the animal who doesn't look like rhinosaurus, who doesn't look like an uh, elephant, who doesn't look like a pig, who doesn't look like anything, but then it is something. And uh, in this story, the tapir is a mutated beast that, again, is so confused by the development and uh, very clumsy. And uh, it has got a, because of the pollution that happened around, so it grow with a lot of uh, legs and uh, and uh, with eyes, and it along the way it goes, it eat up all the things that it uh, happened in, uh, to be happen to be in front of this creature. So uh, at the end of the day, people will find those uh, symbols of uh, animals that I showed just now in the belly of uh, this beast. So to realize this idea, we go through a series of thought. First is a more organic way of doing this uh, repart. 
but uh, when we go along the design process, we thought that this is also a place-making project. So we wanted to do it like more like a building form rather than a animal form. A building form, but that still given the the uh, you know effect of uh, like an animal, animal-like building. Therefore, this is uh, closer to what we wanted to uh, achieve. We thought that why we should do uh, you know a, a repart that has got space inside that has uh, allowed people to, uh, to actually use it as a public space, at the same time exhibit its uh, artwork within, which itself is artwork, and we have ducts and pipings that uh, link one to another. It's like uh, uh, sound transmission uh, pipes that people can have fun. It's like another way of doing a playground. And there are some bird's nests that we're trying to create up here, trying to uh, attract or re-attract birds, migrants, come back to this area. Uh, there are old sampan that we uh, salvage from somewhere, from the sea nomads uh, village, and we try to install here. So this itself is a 23 to 26 uh, meter long uh, structure. There's a study of the plan. And uh, we try to do it in, uh, with uh, salvage timbers, all sorts of recycled material. In fact, in the last three, four weeks, we have been extending our, uh, our request to friends from JB to really give us all the contacts of junk yards and uh, recyc reclaim uh, timbers uh, areas that where we can buy all the used uh, timber and ducts and st steel grills and all that to help us to uh, do installation on this project. In fact, we are running on, a, again, a very shoestring budget on this. We also started to uh, asking for help from uh, uni students from uh, UTM, Skudai, and as well as uh, UCSI. So they are very good response from these people. We are scheduling to uh, actually move on site uh, first week of uh, October, and uh, therefore, Things are getting a little bit excited now in the office. We did a lot of a study model. This is the latest version of it. So we thought that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, this is a, a building or a public space, and uh, it is also trying to uh, to uh, create uh, some awareness among people, the users about the environment and uh, perhaps uh, we can actually uh, bring some uh, changes.